Welcome to Smarter Circuits. I'm your host, Ian Klein. In this video, I'm going to be building an inexpensive critter cam, sort of. I'll begin at the beginning. I live in Ohio, particularly the Dayton area. Depending on the season, we get all kinds of interesting wildlife passing through. Some folks might be saying, deer, you get deer. And you'd be partially correct, but we get all kinds of other critters. In fact, much to my surprise, we had a black bear visit our yard some time ago. This is rare, but it does happen in this area of the state from time to time. What disappointed me about this visit is that I didn't get any pictures or video of the unusual sighting, just a really confused wife and dog. Given my proclivity for building automated solutions and my collection of gadgets, my wife suggested I make a critter cam. She has a gift for coming up with fantastic builds, especially when I have creator's block. The first thing I do when tackling something like this is ask the question, what does this machine need to do? That seems like an obvious question, but the key isn't the question, it's how you answer it. Let's break it down. This machine needs to take a picture or video of an animal when it enters our yard. Simple, but we can dive deeper until we find the functional floor of the solution. This machine needs to take a picture or video of an animal when it enters our yard without constantly running and regardless of weather or lighting conditions. It also needs to do this without scaring the animal away, so no motion activated lights. I added the caveat that I must accomplish this with whatever I happen to have lying around, partly because I should have enough devices to accomplish this, but mostly because I don't want to spend money on any new devices at the moment. Please consider joining our Patreon, linked below. If I want to take video or pictures during the day, this is pretty easy. I have a leftover Logitech C922 webcam that should be more than suitable for taking reasonably good pictures in sufficient light during the day. At night, however, I'm going to need a different solution. There are ways I could modify this camera to pick up infrared, but a much simpler solution is this cheap 10-year-old IP camera I happen to have collecting dust. The resolution is awful, I'll admit, but any shot at night will be limited in quality without spending money on new devices. Now that I have the cameras chosen, I need to trigger them and to snap a picture or record video, and I need to store those pictures or videos. Enter the Raspberry Pi. I can control both cameras and store data easily with the Pi. The last piece I'll need is the triggering mechanism. Time for another of my favorite things, the Shelly motion sensor. What's really great about using this device is that I can not only use it to tell when something moves into an area, I can also tell how bright it is and switch cameras accordingly. The Raspberry Pi I'm using already has the operating system installed, so I'll link to instructions on that in the description. I will be covering the complete setup of the Shelly motion sensor though. Here is where I plan to install the cameras. There's a good view of the area where the animals seem to come from, as well as a convenient electrical outlet. The soffit should provide an adequate mounting space and it will all be well protected from rain or snow. After mounting the camera and running the power to it, I can hook up an ethernet cable and access the interface from my laptop. I'll need to set the orientation since I've mounted the camera upside down and I'm also going to set the zoom as wide as it will go. I could write some PTZ control software later to track moving objects once they're detected, but that's probably overkill. Technically, you don't even need the motion and lux sensor. You could write software that can handle those by comparing frames from the cameras, but that's overly complicated for this build and using the motion sensor saves a heavy load on the Raspberry Pi's CPU. Since my trigger device is independent of my cameras and it's battery operated, I can place the sensor somewhere a little better for picking up movement in the area I expect it to be. Since the animals tend to walk along the berm below the crest of this small hill, I can align the sensor to pick up movement along this corridor. Before I attach the sensor to the mount, I need to turn it on by using a paperclip or the handy little tool that came with the device to press the power reset button next to the USB charging port. I charged the battery before I started. With the sensor mounted, I can log into the ad hoc Wi-Fi on the device from my phone and set up the Wi-Fi. I already have an MQTT broker for my system, so I'll be using that for communication, but you could also use a lightweight API on the Raspberry Pi and send HTTP requests from the Shelly directly. I've already set up my Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi during the installation of the operating system. Again, links in the description for more information on that. So once the Raspberry Pi and webcam are mounted, I can simply log in via Secure Shell and install OpenCV and Paho MQTT. I'll skip showing the installation of these packages since OpenCV took over two hours on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus I'm using. I'll link instructions on installing these packages in the description. Some time ago, I stated that I wasn't going to do any more code videos, 
and I really still don't think I present coding very well, but I'm going to anyway because this one is super simple. First, I create a class for the critter cam and build an initializer method or constructor. Inside, I assign the class an array of video capture devices using the OpenCV library. The webcam is video device 0. The IP camera I'm using has credentials set up with view only, no control access, so I use those to access the camera stream. I define a method for capturing from either camera that I will use later. I make a local variable to represent the selected capture device, and then I create a writer to output frames to a file. I'll need to insert the date into the file name. I added the hour and minute to the string as well after this was recorded, but you get the idea. I have to set the encoding for the video, and here I use XVID. The two cameras have varying specs, so I need to be able to choose a frame rate and resolution that corresponds to the camera in use. I could create a new class to store the camera configuration, but using two arrays here gets the job done quickly and well enough for this build. I'll use the camNum variable to index the frame rate and resolution for the writer. I want to capture video for a set number of seconds, so I add the argument to the method signature and create a while loop, checking to see if the current time is greater than that many seconds ago. I read the frame from the selected capture device and write it to the output file. Once the seconds have passed, I release the file to finish the capture. When the program closes, I want to properly close connections to the resources in use and release any locked memory, so I release each camera and call destroy all windows to signal OpenCV to dispose of resources as well. This program will be listening to an MQTT topic for messages from the motion sensor, so I import the Paho MQTT client library and create a client instance as a property of the main class. I need to handle messages as they're published, and I want to know when MQTT connects or disconnects, so I set some local methods to the appropriate delegates on the client. To avoid race conditions on shutdown, I want to track the state of the program in a bool on the main class. The message, connect, and disconnect method signatures need to match what the delegates are expecting in PAHO, for the on message, client, user data, and message are needed. I put the message handling logic in a try catch so any error doesn't stop the whole program. I get the topic and payload from the incoming MQTT message. If something goes wrong here, there's not much I can do, and it's likely garbage data anyway that can't be reparsed, so I do nothing. I will store the last status of motion, which I could have set as a bool here, but for some reason I made it an empty string. It's okay, Python forgives a lot of sins, for better or worse. I need to parse the payload from the message with JSON load string. I get the motion state from the data and check to see if it differs from the state I know. If so, I set the last state and then if that is true, fire the motion method. I need to know how bright it is so I can select the appropriate camera. 
I can get that from the incoming data. In the motion method, I check to see if the lux is higher than 800, which I found to be about the threshold in these conditions for the webcam. If it's bright enough, I use the webcam for one minute. If it's dark, I will use the IP camera and capture for two minutes, for reasons. I need to create a start method I can call from my main initializer, or from another class later if I choose. I will connect my MQTT client to my broker, then set my running state to true. I have to start the MQTT listener thread and put the main thread into a waiting loop so long as running is true. If running gets set to false, I'll fall into the dispose method. In the dispose method, I'll make sure the MQTT client is disconnected before the program exits. I'm only really interested in knowing when the client is connected or disconnected for informational reasons right now, but this could be used later for more complex redundancy and error handling. OnConnect requires client, user data, flags, and RC in the signature, but I won't use them so that typo is fine. OnDisconnect requires client, user data, and RC in the signature, and again, I won't use them. For this to stand alone, I create a program entry point, create an instance of my main class, and call the start method. I got ahead of myself earlier, so I need to go back to the message handler and add a check to make sure we're getting the right topic. I also add a way to stop the critter cam using a different subtopic. Lastly, the client needs to be subscribed to the appropriate topic for my motion sensor. I will put this code up on the GitHub repo at some point. Now, I can run the program and see what I get. I added a little more logging before I ran this just to show what the message from the sensor looks like. Well, that's all there is to it. I now have a dual camera system that will take pictures and record video when there is motion in the yard. I'll probably get more than I want, but I'd rather it be that way than getting less than I need. I'm going to let this setup run for a while and I'll post results in a couple of weeks. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and of course if you did enjoy it and haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. If you want to know what's going on between episodes, you can follow Smarter Circuits on Twitter, at Circuits Smarter, and if you'd like to help make more and better videos possible, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page linked below. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue building Smarter Circuits.